throughout the day, what we use really depends on what tasks we're working on. If we're designing that day, then we're typically using a lot of open source software. Uh, like processing, which is a creative coding environment. If we're doing a lot of 3D modeling, the primary tools we use are MeshLab, which is another open source software that's for mesh processing. The only commercial 3D modeling software that we really use is Rhinoceros, that we use a lot for sketching ideas before we start a project. My tech arsenal is pretty small. I use an iPhone and I have a desktop for all my work. As a developer, I spend most of my time on my main computer. It's a 64-bit PC, nothing special. I have a couple of monitors, that's important to me, wouldn't mind having another. Uh, I can work on my laptop, but I do prefer to be on my PC. Uh, I kind of just find myself to be a desktop sort of guy. My typical tech arsenal is a desktop computer, a iPad, and a mobile device. But what really takes it to the next level is the applications like Time Master and Evernote that allow me to sync all my devices together. Evernote is a really great app that syncs data across all three devices. It's really changed my career and my efficiency since I can take notes and input into my iPad with Evernote and sync all of that information to my computer and also my mobile phone. So I have all of that data with me at all times. Just even two years ago, with all of my billable hours for clients, I was taking manual notes and then duplicating my work in the office by inputting on the computer later. Time Master, an application for the mobile phone, has completely changed my business. It means that I can input billable hours on my phone and then even press one button and send an invoice to a client. For me, it has been my smartphone. I was kind of a late adopter. I wasn't sure that I needed an iPhone, but once I had it, I realized how important it is to what I do as an artist and a designer. Um, I am constantly taking in information, you know, inspiration from wherever, colors, you know, words, typography, just anything. And my phone allows me to kind of take that information and put it into Evernote or Pinterest and refer to it later so that I can kind of flesh out those ideas. Definitely the most impactful technology for us has been computer controlled manufacturing. Uh, so 2D techniques like laser cutting and water jet cutting, 3D techniques like CNC routing, and most importantly, 3D printing. What these tools have allowed us to do is not only sort of realize these designs that we grow in the computer, but they also allow us to do things like make customized pieces for the same price as cookie cutter ones or make series of all unique products that are affordable. This has also been facilitated by sort of online service providers that allow you to easily sort of work with companies that do 3D printing. So like Shapeways is a company that we work with a lot. What I'd really like to see is a smart kitchen. I love cooking, I love putting meals together for my family, but it's really difficult sometimes to come up with fresh ideas and you know, Pinterest is handy for showing you all those wonderful meals and everything, but wouldn't it be awesome if Pinterest and a smart kitchen somehow like combined and there was like an itemized database of all your ingredients with suggestions for recipes and meals and like they could even tell what the weather was. It was like today's kind of a salad day or something like that. That would be amazing. I already see it happening but I can't wait until computers and TVs merge into one device. The next thing I see coming that's going to hopefully be affordable for all is the TV slash computer behind a mirror and that would happen in the kitchen, the bathroom, the shower at an affordable price for everybody so they have all of their data accessible to them all the time. In the store of the future, you know, everything that you interact with and buy is customized to you or you can design it in some way yourself. You go in and every sort of display or product is actually not just something you pick up off the shelf, but is an interaction. I would love to see more smart home technology. Um, I often think about that in terms of a thermostat. I'd love to have a thermostat that was aware of the outside temperature and even the forecast and could thus make smart decisions about how to set its temperature and perhaps even open and close windows or vents accordingly. And so not having this huge infrastructure from 
manufacturing things in huge quantities and shipping them around the world, but instead having an infrastructure for making things when you want them or need them so there's less waste and less shipping and less general pollution from the whole design practice. And what you also see because of that is sort of enabling small designers and crafters to really have successful independent businesses. In 10 years, I think, even with all these advancements in technology, I think we're going to be struggling with finding that balance between work and um, quality of life. But one of the key things that I do see happening is that we'll no longer see keypads. We're going to have voice and retina technology. Just like your dog now has a, a chip, um, I can see in 30 years that we could have chips implanted that will take the place of mobile devices. So for technology, I just kind of wonder if in 10 years there will be a way for us to connect with the people around us, uh, maybe through Twitter or Facebook, but in a way that allows us to spend less time looking at screens. I think people are experiencing a little bit of social networking burnout and taking time to kind of, you know, step back and say, I really want to just focus on living life and check in just a little bit less. So maybe in 10 years, there will be a way to do that where we can still connect, but spend less time staring at little screens. I look forward to the day when I can access all programs and media that I own from any of my digital devices.